My name is Sharon Hine. I'm 53 years old. I've worked in oncology my whole career, so for 30 years it's always been oncology, hospice, radiation oncology, and medical oncology. I'm Ralph Street. I'm Sharon Hines' husband. This coming September will be 25 years. Wonderful marriage. Um, I can say it's been it's been a wonderful 25 years. Obviously, because we're still married. You know, Ralph is my best friend. I can I I say anything I feel to him, and I hold back nothing. And sometimes I think that might be hard because I'm a realist too. Out of the blue, feeling perfectly healthy, uh, working full time, very active, and I had developed a cough. Uh, I um, had gone for my chest x-ray in the morning and looked for the results. At lunchtime, they weren't ready. I'm an oncology nurse practitioner. I have access to the uh, results of tests. And um, it was probably about 5 o'clock that afternoon that I pulled them up. And as I started to read them, I just panicked. I had to look at the name again. I wasn't sure. I was, I felt like I was reading someone else's report. I just could not believe it. A year ago, this month, I was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. It was very hard in the beginning because of my knowledge and experience. All I could think about was what was yet to come. Ironically, being in the business, if you will, in oncology, and they said, well, Sharon, you know, you know, you know too much. Everything I've learned about cancer over the last 30 years, the treatment, the side effects, what patients, my biggest teacher has been patients, and what they have told me what's hard, um, what's difficult, what helps. Um, it's, it's having lived that for 30 years that ha has definitely been helpful uh, for me to, to get through all of this. You know, our strength as a family unit, we pulled it together, we kept it together. It's just these, these things, you know, uh, kind of present themselves and, and you deal with them. I'd like to see myself grow old. I mean, I know that may not be the case, but I'd like to live as long as I could. I, you know, I've always been someone who's um, enjoyed it, life and, you know, each moment. I mean, we deal with the serious stuff when we need to, but we try and keep everything as light as possible. <laughs> Within two or three weeks, you start to lose your hair. So I went and I got it cut short first. And then one day we were sitting out back and uh, just enjoying the beautiful sunny uh, afternoon. And I was sitting there and I started doing this to my hair and it was coming out in clumps. And uh, Ralph said, don't do that, you're freaking me out. And I said, well, you know what, it's time to shave my head. We're all set up in the basement and I had decided I wanted to shave my head in the shape of Ralph's hair, who Ralph is bald and has very little hair along the side and back of his head. So that's what we did. We um, started to shave my head and then we took pictures of Ralph and I from the back with matching hairdos. Um, so uh, I, I, I couldn't walk around with it like that. We can then continue to shave the rest of it off. But, you know, that's, that's the kind of thing I, I think is so important. You know, these bad things happen, but somehow you gotta, you gotta find the humor in them. And, and hopefully I've been able to do that most of the time. Humor's always been a big part of my life. And that was one of the things that attracted me to Ralph was he was a funny guy. And, um, and it was always about having fun, and laughter is so much a part of that. Uh, so I think um, it's definitely helped me cope through my cancer diagnosis, but just throughout life altogether. My sister's a teacher, and she travels every school vacation, and um, I was really missing her, you know. 
I need my big sister kind of thing. She's been wonderful. She calls me every single day. She, um, uh, she said to me at one time, she goes, you know, there's going to be plenty of time to cry. Let's just have as much fun as we can. She lives in Rhode Island. They flew into Providence, um, stopped at a bakery to get me my favorite lemon cake and then headed here and, um, came in and presented my cake to me, which had written across it, fuck cancer. Uh, which of course just made all of us laugh and I have I have pictures of that I used to keep out so I could look at it every day. Ralph threw me a big birthday bash back in October because um, I, I thought it could you know this could be my last birthday you know it was uh, 53 and uh, we rented the Lady Catherine down on the Connecticut River and had like 150 family and friends with an awesome band, and it, it was just so much fun, such good energy, good people, and I now I can't wait to do it again. So um, when I wrote thank yous to people after that party, it was a time for me to just share some of those things you'd want to say to people. So it was, it was a lot of cards and notes to write, but um, every one of them was from the heart, so it, it was a good thing for me to do. The longer I've been here, it's been um, uh, a gift, actually, because I didn't think I'd be here in a year. And um, and when I hear the doctors say to me, you know, these these never are quiet. They eventually start to grow again, mutate and grow, or whatever. I just want to say, I say to myself, but not to them, shut up. When you mend the patches of my clothing You know every thread goes through my heart Guessing that the river's gonna dry up Well I said that's not the reason why we part Looking around the corner where I left you Wondering whatever led me there Knowing that a quite unconscious feeling Could be bought to drown a memory anyway she said, I don't want your medicine and I don't need a sparrow in my heart. When I'm covered by the thunder, I get rid of all your breath deep in my lungs.